Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, are you game for a dare? Who, me? Sure I am. What's up? Well, then, tomorrow morning, try a breakfast of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat topped with milk or cream and fruit. Boy, I just dare you to say it doesn't hit the spot. These ready-to-serve king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, tomorrow, try this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. A heavy shipment of gold dust had just been received at the express office in Forty Mile. As Henry Bishop, the manager of the express office, supervised the transfer of the gold to the office safe, little Alan McCray, his adopted son, watched with interest. Here's the last two sacks of dust, Hank. All right, put them right in there with the other sacks, and I'll close up the safe. All right. There. Now, how about signing this receipt? <coughs> sure thing, Matt. Oh, thanks. How long are you going to have this gold on your hands, Hank? Well, just overnight. We're shipping it down to Dawson tomorrow morning. I suppose that means you'll be bunking here at the office all night, huh? Yep, I think I'd better stick pretty close to the safe to let gold get shipped out of here. Well, good luck, Hank. I hope no one gets any ideas about relieving you of that gold. Well, thanks. I'm not worried. Bye. Goodbye. Gosh, Dad, if you're going to stay here at the express office, you won't be able to come home to supper. Huh? Mom said she's making me a birthday cake. She says that after some no. <laughs> Don't you worry about that, son. I've got no intention of missing out on my share of that birthday cake. You see, uh, Constable Ross has promised he'll keep an eye on things for an hour or two while I'm gone. As Hank Bishop spoke, the front door opened and a man named Clifton Dormont entered the office. Well, hello there, Cliff. Howdy, Hank. Hello there, Sonny. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks, Mr. Dormont. I guess I'd better be getting on home, Dad. All right. Now remember... Don't you be late for supper. Don't right? worry, I'll be there with bells off. Goodbye. <laughs> You're mighty fond of that boy, aren't you, Hank? I wouldn't trade that little fella for all the gold in the Yukon. I guess he sets a heap of store by you, too. Yeah, we're pretty good pals, I reckon. I wonder what would happen if he ever found out what happened to his real father. What? What do you mean? I reckon you know what I mean, all right. Alan knows what happened to his father. He was killed on the trail in an accident. Oh, no, Hank. That's what you told the kid. But that's not what really happened. What, what are you driving at, Dormont? A little over two years ago, you used to work for the express company down in Dawson. What about it? One night, there was a holdup. A gang of crooks robbed the express company safe. You recognized one of them as a neighbor of yours named Eric McGray. Later on, when they were making their getaway, you took a couple of shots at them. One of your shots hit McRae and killed him. Uh, listen, Cliff. I don't know how you found all this out, but... You're not aiming to tell the boy, are you? Well, that depends. On what? On whether or not you, uh... Cooperate with me. Cooperate with you? What does that mean? It means you helped me steal that shipment of gold that just came in from the creeks. Are you crazy, Dormont? What do you think? Why, Thunder, I think you are. I'd be hanged if I help you steal any gold. Well, suit yourself, Hank, but it sure is going to be too bad when little Alan finds out that you killed his father. Why, you dirty poor kid. Kind of bust things up between you and the kid, won't it? 
In fact, I doubt if he'll ever want to talk to you again. Can't blame the kid much, either. I sure wouldn't want any truck with someone who'd killed my old man. Except maybe to put a bullet through the critter. I'd like to put a bullet through you, Dormont. Yeah, maybe so, Hank, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, are you going to help me or aren't you? Hank Bishop thought fast. He decided to play for time by apparently consenting to Dormont's scheme. Later on, he might find a way to prevent the robbery and still keep Dormont from carrying out his threat. All right. What, what do you want me to do? Well, now you're being sensible. I take it you're sleeping on the premises here tonight, is that right? Yes, that's right. Very well. Sometime during the night, I'll show up at the back door with a couple of friends of mine. We'll have a sled with us. Go on. You'll unlock the safe and turn over all the gold to us. Then we'll tie you up and gag you. You understand? I understand, all right. Good. My friends and I'll be around to see you sometime after midnight. Two men were waiting for Cliff Dorman at the Gold Nugget Cafe. One was a tough-looking sourdough known as Jug. The other was called Squint. Cliff Dorman walked over to their table. Well, howdy, Dorman. Howdy, boys. Pull up a chair. Thanks. How'd you make out? Perfect. When I threatened to tell the kid about Hank shooting his old man, Hank knuckled under even quicker than I expected. He agreed to the whole scheme. And it's all set. That's right. All we have to do is go and grab the gold. Uh, what time you figure on pulling the job? Well, I told him we'd show up sometime after midnight. But you two better come around to my cabin as soon as it gets dark. We'll uh, play cards or something till it's time to get moving. All right. We'll be there. That evening at supper, Hank Bishop seemed moody and depressed. He failed to join in the fun, even when it came time for Alan to open his birthday presents. Finally, the boy remarked, Gosh, Dad, you don't seem to be enjoying yourself very much. Why, who, me? Why, why, sure, I'm having a fine time. I think maybe Pa's kind of tired out tonight. But don't let that spoil your fun, Alan. You go ahead and open that last present there. Pa and I are anxious to see how you like it. All right. Oh, it's a cardboard box. I wonder what's in it. Oh... A pair of skates. Just what I wanted. Oh, golly. I can hardly wait to try them out. Oh, I'll go. Sergeant Preston and King. Hello there, Alan. Gee whiz. Am I glad you two came to see us? I hope I'm not interrupting your supper. Oh, no, sir. Come on in. Thanks. One, King. Oh, land's sakes, if it isn't Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Mrs. Bishop. Hello, Hank. Well, by thunder, it's good to see you again. Here, let me take your pocket. Oh, don't bother, Hank. I just stopped in for a minute. But, Sergeant, you've got to sit down and have a piece of my birthday cake. That's your birthday right. cake? Alan, do you mean to tell me you're a year older today? That's right. And you should see the dandy presents I got. Oh? Some wooden soldiers and this storybook that came all the way from the States. And, and look... I got a pair of skates. Oh. Well, I'd say you're a mighty lucky boy, Alan. If I'd known this was your birthday, I'd have bought you something myself. No, never you mind that, Sergeant. Just take off your pocket and let me cut you a piece of cake. Well, I came here on business, but that cake does look mighty appetizing. You bet your boots it does. Yeah, just give me that pocket and rub a chair. Mrs. Bishop? That's the best cake I've tasted since I came to the Yukon. <laughs> Have another piece, Sergeant. Oh, no, thanks. I couldn't. That first piece was big enough for two helpings. Besides, I still haven't told Hank why I came here. Wait. What's up, Sergeant? I hate to sound like a killjoy, but I'm worried about that gold shipment. Wait. Why so? Well, right after you went home, Constable Ross found a stranger hanging around the express office. He was acting so furtive that the constable got suspicious and took him down to jail for questioning. Well, I'd be doggone. What did you find out? Not much. He says his name's Ed Maddock. Of course, that could be an alias. What's he look like? Oh, dark, medium height, full beard, dressed like any other sourdough. I'd say his age is, oh, 35 or thereabouts. Hmm. Suddenly, Hank Bishop realized that this was the break he had been waiting for. If he could persuade Sergeant Preston to stand guard at the express office... Cliff Dormont would be unable to carry out his scheme. Sergeant, I wonder if it might not be a good idea for you to stand guard at the express office tonight. Eh? Well, I think it's a very good idea. 
Matter of fact, I was going to suggest it myself. You were planning on bunking at the office all night, weren't you? Well, I still am, Sergeant. I just thought if there's any chance of trouble, I'll feel a lot better if you and King are around to back me up. Well, plan's sake, so I'll feel better too, Sergeant. Well, perhaps King and I had better go to the express office right now. What about you, Hank? Well, if you don't mind, Sergeant, I'll stick around here for a while longer, seeing as how it's Alan's birthday. All right, Hank. I'll see you at the express office later on. Come on, King. Oh, gosh, Sergeant Preston. I was hoping you and King could stay here all evening. I'll tell you what, Alan... Tomorrow, King and I will come back here and bring you a present to make up for the way we forgot your birthday tonight. Oh, golly, Mom. Did you hear that? I'm going to get another present. This is the best birthday I ever had. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, the strangest thing happened here in the studio this afternoon. You won't believe it. I was standing in front of the microphone, sort of thinking out loud about what I was going to tell you about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. All of a sudden, it happened. I was saying, wheat and rice shot from guns is sensational. Terrific. Yes, sirree. Hey, stop yelling into me. Yep, and another thing I... Huh? Who said that? I did. Can't you see? What? A microphone talking? A microphone talking back to an announcer? Blame me? You shouting that way? Well, gee, I'm sorry. You see, I do get excited whenever I think about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh. oh, look, Mike, they're so crisp, tender, delicious. Made from only the flavor-rich premium grains, you know. I see. Why, they're shot from guns. Actually exploded up to eight times normal size. Why, they're colossal king size. Hey, hey, hey take it easy. Oh, dear, dear, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, you know, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing, good for you. Furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Uh -huh. In fact, when it comes to a tasty, ready-to-serve breakfast cereal, why, there's no beating this eaten. They're sensational, terrific. Uh oh there you go again. Oh, gosh. Maybe all I ought to say is, for a breakfast treat... Buy Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue our story. Hank Bishop thought he had found a way out of his dilemma. He had asked Sergeant Preston to stand guard at the express office overnight. The next move was to get in touch with Cliff Dormont and convince him that his scheme for robbing the safe was no longer practical. That evening, before joining Sergeant Preston at the express office, Hank stopped off at Dormont's cabin. Bishop, what in blazes are you doing here? Well, something's come up. Let me in. All right. Hello there, Bishop. Huh? Jug. So, that's how you found out about Alan's dad, eh, Dormont? That's right. Jug told me the whole story. He knows all about how you shot Eric McRae. Well, Dormont, we're going to have to call off the robbery. What? I just found out that Sergeant Preston is going to stand guard at the express office well, today. What? Oh. oh, you called in a Mountie to gum up our plans, huh, Bishop? Well, maybe you won't think you're so smart It's when not I... my fault. The constable found some stranger snooping around the express office. That's why Preston decided to guard the place. What are we going to do, Dormont? Looks like this ruins our whole scheme. Oh, maybe not. What do you mean? I've got an idea. Instead of waiting till after midnight, we'll pull the job in an hour or so. No, we don't. Quiet, wait Hank. Till... Now, here's the way we'll work it. Jug, you and Squint will go to the cafe, the one near the express office. Pretend to get all lit up, then start a fight. So you'll get thrown out into the street. Well, what's the idea wait, there? Wait, let me finish, will you? As soon as they throw you out, start slinging lead around. You know, take pot shots at each other. But aim high so no one gets hurt. Yeah? Then what? Sergeant Preston will hear the shooting. He'll come running out of the express office to find out what's going on. When he sees you two, he'll have to arrest you. Take you to jail till you sober up. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm beginning to get the picture. Well, I'm not. Go ahead and explain what you're getting at, Dormont. While Preston's gone, I'll drive the sled up to the back door of the express office, grab the gold, and hightail it back to the cabin. Well, how about it? 
That plan suit the two of you? Yes, yes sir. Sir. All right. Hank, you heard what we're going to do. Now get back to the express office and sit tight. And remember, if you try double-crossing us, that kid you're so fond of is going to hear the whole story of how you killed his old man. It was more than an hour later. Hank Bishop and Sergeant Preston were sitting in the express office. King lay with his head on his paws at his master's feet. If you're feeling sleepy, Hank, go right ahead and turn in. King and I don't mind waiting up alone. No, it's all right. I'm wide awake. Huh? I guess maybe I'll load up my pipe again. Gunshots. Uh, sounds like trouble. Looks like a riot in front of the cafe. I better get my partner and see what's wrong. Oh, uh, Sergeant, do you think he'll be back right away? Hard to say, Hank. Depends on whether I have to make any arrests. Well, would you mind leaving King here with me? Oh, good idea. King, stay here and help Hank guard the express office. Stay back, fella. Don't follow him. Hank stood for a moment in the open doorway, watching Sergeant Preston stride off in the direction of the cafe. Then he summoned King. Come on, King. Let's get back inside. A few moments later, King growled at the sound of a dog team pulling up at the rear of the express office. Oh, steady, King, steady, boy. Hank Bishop knew that he was in a tight spot. He had one last hope of persuading Cliff Dormont not to rob the express office. Hey, what's that dog doing here? Hey, it's Sergeant Preston's dog, King. He left him behind when he went to see what all the shooting was about. Hang on to his collar good and tight. I don't like that look in his eye. Well, listen, Dormont. We can't go through with the robbery, not with the dog here on the premises. Let me come inside. No, no, it's no go. I'm not going to help you rob the sheriff. And what's more, I never intended to. And if you're smart, you'll clear out of here and not make a fuss. Yeah, well, if you're smart, you'll do just what I tell you. That gun, but what's the idea? The idea is we're going through with this robbery, whether you like it or not. Now back up, and don't let that mutt try any tricks. All right, back, King, back, boy. That's better. Now hurry up and get that safe open. Reluctantly, Hank Bishop went over to the safe and worked the dial. Finally, the heavy door swung open, disclosing the sacks of gold inside. As Hank straightened up, he saw Cliff Dormont suddenly raise his gun. Dormont, what are you going to do? You don't think I'm fool enough to let you and this dog go on living, do you? It's too bad it has to end like this, Bishop. If you'd have been smart and played along with us, this wouldn't have been necessary. Now I got no choice. Here What's go. the gun what? for, mister? Who in thunder are you? My name is Ed Maddock, if that means anything to you. With his attention distracted by the bearded stranger who had just entered the express office, Dormont failed to notice that King was edging stealthily toward the door. You'd better put that gun down before someone gets hurt. Well, mind the advice. Just get your hands up. Oh, no, you don't. Oh! oh you... You killed him. Yeah. And you're the next one that's going to get it. Hey, the dog got away. Yes. Now you'll get what's coming to you. He'll bring Sergeant Preston and track you down no matter where you go. You'll swing for murder. Oh, no, I won't. When Preston gets here, I'll fool him. And what's more, you're going to help me do it. Now, this is the way we'll work it. When Preston gets here, you tell him this. Meanwhile, King was racing away in search of Sergeant Preston. The sergeant had already disarmed Jug and Squint and was marching them off to jail. But it was easy for the great dog to follow his master's scent. King, old fellow, what are you doing here? King tugged gently but insistently at the sergeant's uniform. What's the matter with that husky, Sarge? I guess he's trying to tell me something's wrong. All right, King, lead the way, fella. A few minutes later, Sergeant Preston and his prisoners arrived at the express office. Go ahead, you two. Go on inside. All right. As the sergeant entered behind Jug and Squint, he saw the bearded stranger lying on the floor. Hank was holding a gun. Hank, what happened? Hey, he tried to hold me up. I, I had to shoot him. You know who this is? Well, he said his name was Maddock. Ed Maddock. Yes, the same man Constable Ross found snooping around the office. The sergeant's back was turned to the window at the rear of the office. He didn't know that Cliff Dormont stood just outside the window, watching intently with a gun in one hand. There's something awfully familiar about this fellow, Maddock. Yeah. Hank. Huh? How does it happen his gun wasn't all the way out of its holster? Well, I... I saw him start to draw, so I, I plugged him before he got the drop on me. I better take charge of his gun. <laughs> his pulse is still beating. But you, you mean he's still alive? Wait till I examine his wound. King had tried hard to control his eagerness while his master paused to examine the wounded stranger. 
But now the big husky began to whine and bark impatiently. He was anxious to find the man who had done the shooting. What's wrong, fella? Hank, someone go out that door. Hey, no, nobody went out there, Sergeant. Dad. Just the same, I think I'll take a look. Get your hands up, Preston. And don't let that dog come any closer. Steady, King. What's the game, Dormont? You'll find out quick enough. Turn around, march back into the office. Make sure the dog goes with you. All right. Come on, fella. Well, Sergeant, sure help me, I'm sorry. There was no way I could warn you. I had to do what Dormont told me to. What about that gun you're holding, well, Hank? It's empty. Dormont unloaded it before you got here. Oh. He was out there at the back window, keeping me covered all the while I was talking to you. I'm beginning to understand. Not quite soon enough, I'm afraid. What went wrong, Dormont? Everything. First, Hank gets stubborn and says he's not going through with the robbery. Then that stranger comes poking his nose in and tries to shoot it out with me. What are we going to do now? Only one thing we can do. We'll have to kill Hank and the Mountie and get over the border as fast as we can. You two start taking the gold out of the safe and load it on the sled out back. All right, Dormont. Right. Several minutes later, Jug and Squint carried the last load of gold out to the sled. As they disappeared out the back door, the sergeant suddenly smiled. <laughs> What's so funny, Preston? After all that trouble, you're still not going to get away with the gold. Oh, why not? Because the man you wounded has you covered. Yeah, don't kid me, Preston. You're just trying to make me look around so you can jump me. He won't believe me, Maddox. Drop that gun, uh, mister. What I the... said drop that gun. You... At that very moment, Jug and Squint re-entered the express office. The trick, Dormont. Don't do it. But it was too late. The sergeant's fist crashed into Dormont's jaw. <coughs> King charged at Jug, and Hank Bishop took on Squint. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, you sure do. When I'm done with you, I'll take a few good cracks at that skunk Dormont. Sorry, Hank. But I'm afraid Dormont's not going to last that long. Never mind, Dormont. Get this dog off me. Call him off. The fight didn't last long. Take it. Oh. It ended when Cliff Dormont went down for the third time and started begging for mercy. No, 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 don't hit me again, Mountie. I give up. Just don't hit me again. The sergeant picked up the gun that had fallen from Cliff's hands. Get on your feet, Dormont. Squint, that'll be about enough out of you. Yes, yeah, Squint. I ain't half finished with this poor kid yet, Sergeant. I think he's had enough, Hank. So have I if you'll just call off this timber wolf. All right, King Boy, you can let him up. I'll take over now. Stand up, Jug. You're all three under arrest in the name of the Queen. Dormont, I... I'd like to wring your neck. What are you blaming me for? I couldn't help it. That critter on the floor had the drop on me. Leastways, I thought he did. Hey, you fool. Preston took his gun while you were out out the window. I figured you hadn't seen that, Dormont, since my back was turned to the window. Have all the confounded luck. Come on, all of you. It was more than an hour later at the mounted police post that Hank Bishop learned the true identity of the bearded stranger who called himself Ed Maddock. Maddox's wound had just been dressed by the police surgeon. Sergeant Preston was speaking. The doctor seems to think your wound isn't too serious. Says it should heal up in a couple of weeks. Ah, that's good news. You know, uh, Sergeant Preston remarked that there was something familiar about your face. And by thunder, if there isn't something familiar about your voice, too. It should sound familiar, Hank. Huh? Mr. Maddox here used to be a neighbor of yours. What's that? You must have me mixed up with someone else, Sergeant. No, I think not. I've been trying to place you for the last hour, and a few minutes ago, I succeeded. If there uh, were any doubt left in my mind, those initials of yours would pretty well remove it. His initials? What's that got to do with it? Well, a man changes his name, Hank. Chances are he'll adopt an alias with the same initials as his real name. In this case, E.M. E.M.? Yes, for Ed Maddock. And also for Eric McRae. Uh, Eric McRae? I shot into you crazy. I shot Eric McRae down into... Holy smoke. You are Eric McCray. That's right, Hank. Guess I might as well admit it. You'll probably recognize me a little easier when I shave off these whiskers. But uh, I thought you were dead. That shot of yours didn't kill me, and Jug knew it. Well, that dirty... You see, Hank, when the bunch of us got away after robbing the express office, you knew you'd plugged me. Yes? I made the rest of the gang promise that if they were ever captured, they'd say I died and that they'd buried me out in the wilderness. They kept their promise. What have you been doing since then? I made up my mind that someday I'd square things, for Alan's sake. So I started out prospecting. I finally made a strike way up the Pelly River. That was over a year ago. And last month, I decided it was time to, to come back. What do you mean by that? Well, first I went to Whitehorse and arranged to send $2,000 anonymously to the express company up in Dawson. That was my share of the loot. Now the truth is out. Go ahead and snap the handcuffs on me. Perhaps that won't be necessary. 
What do you mean? Eric, it's true you committed a crime, but unlike most criminals, you saw your mistake and were smart enough to reform without waiting for the law to catch up with you. You've made restitution for your theft, and you've proved you can go straight. The law doesn't ask for any more than that. Sergeant, you... You mean I won't have to go to prison? I can't make any promises, Eric. You'll have to remain in custody until this business is cleared up. But I rather think when the express company hears your story, they won't want to prosecute. Especially when they find out how you helped to prevent tonight's robbery. What, what about me, Sergeant? As far as I'm concerned, you're in the clear, Hank. It's pretty obvious that you never intended to go through with the robbery. Well, by Juniper, that's a load off my mind. <laughs> Say, Sergeant... Would it be possible for you to bring your prisoner over to my cabin for a while? Certainly would be, Hank. Don't forget, I promised Alan I'd bring him a birthday present. Birthday present? <laughs> By golly, I forgot this was Alan's birthday. Don't worry, Eric. This time you are the birthday present, and Alan can have you for keeps just as soon as this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice are never sold in bags or bulk. To get the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Buy Quaker puff wheat and Quaker puff rice. Now, listen carefully. You'll hear it. You'll hear it right on this program. Fellas and girls, you're in for the surprise offer of a lifetime. You're going to hear it on this program next Monday. Get in on something big. Be listening next Monday. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the burning cabin. When Ed Wayne's cabin went up in flames one night, I suspected foul play. It turned out that Ed and his wife were the unwitting possessors of a dangerous secret. A secret which could send three men to the gallows. King and I set out to guard the young couple, and in doing so, walked straight into a deadly ambush. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure... Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats, because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth, more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker 